Okay, now let's see the uh, bottom of the screen isn't quite visible. Now it's blurry, but there it is, okay. Um, <coughs> so we've been working on the idea of graphing y equals 2 log base 2 of x minus 2. Well, how do we construct that graph? Well, we're going to start with an actual construction. When we do graph y equals 2 log base 2 of x minus 2, we start with a table of y equals 2 to the x. Why? Because log base 2 is the inverse function of y equals 2 to the x. There are two ways to get the table, and you should be able to do it either way. Count on a test, I will ask you to either construct it and make a table according to your construction, explaining it in detail, or to use rules of exponents, most specifically the rule for negative exponents, which we really need to know. Okay? That and all the other laws of exponents, and that's pretty universally a terrible weakness that people come to for calculus, but we've got to get over that. Okay, so you might have to rule that. Um, you might use the problems I posted last week, um, but one way or another, uh, that's important value. Okay, um, so by construction, well, you, everybody knows the construction, or at least everybody who's still in the course, who's was supposed to learn this construction on the first week uh, and use it throughout, okay? And everybody here knows how to do that construction, so that's good. Uh, the points are negative two, one fourth, negative one, one half, zero, one, one, two, two, four. If you do the construction and label your construction lines, that's a no brain. Okay? Now, we have to understand that that agrees with the rules for exponents. A to the negative b is 1 over a to the b. Well, if x is negative 2, we've got to do 2 to the negative 2, which is 1 over 2 to the second, which is 1 over 4, and so forth. And then here, 0 exponent, we get 1, and then Two to the minus two, two to the second is four. Nobody has any trouble with that. Okay? But the negative exponents, people want to put negatives in these things, do all kinds of things, because they don't focus on the rule and mainly don't even know the rule. So we have to know that rule. So we have to tattoo that rule backwards on our forehead and look in a mirror a lot. <laughs> okay? Or something equivalent. That I'd recommend the equivalent. Yeah, tattooing just takes too long. It's the permanent. You might have other things you want to tattoo. You do a temporary tattoo. <laughs> okay. Uh, okay. And make a table for log base 2 of x. Because that's how we get a table for log base 2 of x. Okay. And we just reverse the columns of the table of the function. And we get the table of the inverse function. Okay. So inverse function. We switch x and y. If you've got a table, switching x and y means what was in the y column goes in the x column, what was in the x column goes in the y column. It also means well, I'm going to say it would have been good. <laughs> okay. Okay, then we make a table for y equals 2 log base 2 of x. Oh, here's how I make that table, just to make sure everybody understands. We start with a table for log base 2 of x. Then 2 log base 2 of x ought to be easy. We just multiply the numbers in the log base 2 of x by 2. And we get these numbers. Okay, well then, let's sketch graph. Here we have the line x equals 4. Why do we use line x equals 4? Well, x goes from 0 to 4. Okay. And then we need yeah. y value to go from negative 2 to 2. Uh, well, we haven't sketched this graph. Okay. We're going to sketch 
the graph of log base two of x. Okay, so the y values go from negative two to two. The x values go from one fourth to four, but of course we're going to see zero. Right? We go from zero to four. All right. So again, looking at this graph, I was looking at this for some reason because I seem to be looking at the wrong thing every time I look. Um, okay. Again, looking here, our x values should go from zero to four. It's pretty clear why that is. Okay. And of course, well, so x values go from zero to four, and we notice uh, that the x values keep doubling. So we just cut this in half, cut this in half, cut this in half, cut this in half, just as we would for the exponential function on the using horizontal lines, cutting in half each time that the construction should be familiar. So this is just like the construction for the log base two graph, but we can flip the graph over this way. And of course, then we have, but we're not, we're not going to talk about that. Okay. Um, so we get points here, 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 and here for log base two of x. And that's straightforward. And we get points here, 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 and here for two log base two of x. And we notice, aha, surprise. Okay. When x equals four, this point is twice as far from the x axis as this one is. Okay. Hmm. Why should that be? Well, because this is doubling this. Okay, we have to make that connection, and people don't easily make that connection. Then over here, uh, well, yeah, this is twice as far from the x axis as this one. If we wanted to locate where this point goes, we would go up twice as high, and lo and behold, we'd end up on this curve. Okay, for any value of x. Get a value on the graph of log base two of x. That's twice as great. Okay, if we come over here and do our estimate, we're going to get y between one and two. Y looks like about one point four. Here it looks like about two point nine or two point eight. And an accurately drawn graph, this would be exactly twice as high as it's. And then over here, the x values are still double. Okay. The x value on the y equals one half line here, actually, the y value on the x equals one half line is here for the log base two function. For the two log base two function, it's down here, twice as far. Okay. And this value on the x equals one fourth line is twice as far as this. Okay, so the graph has been vertically stretched, something that we've been dealing with by transforming rectangles and, and toolkit functions since the first week of class. Okay, so we have to go back and make sure we understand all that. Okay, now we proceed then. And this is a little harder to understand, although it's been explained in some detail back in January. Okay, so you might don't understand it. You do. So what we did now. Um, table for two log base two of x minus two. Now it's a little bit trickier to do this. Like if we put if we use x equals negative two. Okay. Uh, one of the values that we like to use for graph things, we get the log base two of negative two minus two, which is negative four, which doesn't even exist. Okay. So right away, we have a little bit of trouble figuring out what the x values ought to be if we're going to make this table. Right. So we don't bother. We know how to find the value of log base two of x minus two if we know what x minus two is. So we just say, okay, x minus two is one four. What's two log base two of x minus two? Well, right here, if x is one four, log base two is negative two. Two log base two of x is negative four, okay? And from the graph of the basic toolkit log function, 
we know that the log of one fourth, look, two base two log of one fourth is negative two. Uh, okay, so all we need is to know what two log base two of x is when x is equal to these numbers because we're replacing x, well, x minus two. Okay. So again, if x minus two is one fourth, log base two, two log base two of x is negative four. And if x minus two is one half, well, x minus two, you know, have one half here, two log base two function is negative two. So you're gonna get negative two. And you're gonna get zero, and you're gonna get two, and you're gonna get four. In other words, this is just a table of two log base two of x. Now, instead of x, I use x minus two, same thing here. So this has to be so. Um, okay, well, if x minus two equals four, what's x? Well, x is six. If you don't immediately see that, and some people have very poor number sense, that doesn't include anybody here, but you can even have very poor number sense in my own equation. Okay, like. I'll say this is true by number sense. Or by the equation x minus two equals four. So x equals six. Now you have to add two to both sides, but we'd be here now if you didn't know how to do that. Okay. Well, so you can write the equations, for example, for one fourth. Okay, number sense is a little tough when you get to one fourth. What does x have to be for x minus two equal one fourth? So you write x minus two equals one fourth, x minus two plus two equals one fourth plus two, x equals two and a fourth. Okay, now number sense might well tell you that, but just to be sure, we'll be able to check it. So you get two and four, here you get two and a half, here you get three, and here you get um, four. Okay. So now you know that if you're going to graph this versus x, like you're going to try to put the graph of this function on this table, you're going to have to start with the point two and a fourth, negative four. So I'll superpose that graph this one. First of all, here's the line for x equals two, right? Two and a fourth would be well between two, here's four, here'd be three, two and a fourth would be about here. And then when x equals two and a half, well, two and a half. Uh, I guess I could draw my line for x equals three. Extend my line for x equals four. Two and a half, so halfway between here and here. And y should equal negative two. So y is negative two when x equals two and a half. When x equals three, y is zero. That's going to give me a point here. When x equals four, Y is two. That's going to give me a point here. It happens to agree with the point in my original log graph. And then when x equals six, and I don't didn't leave myself room to do x equals six out here, but it should be obvious what's going to happen. This graph is going to have the same shape as the log base two graph, or the, the, the two log base two graph. Okay, same shape, red graph, brownish orange graph. And those graphs each have the shape of a stretched log base two of x. Now the point is, we have a shift Yeah. 
fifths of the log base two of x trout, two units horizontally. Every point on this graph is two units to the right. of the corresponding point on this graph. So when people see log base two of x minus two, if they remember that this horizontally shifts the graph, they'll still want to shift to two units to the left because you see that minus two and it immediately says, well, we should have to have a negative shift. No. X has to be two units greater to give you the same value here. Okay. These X values are all two units greater than these X values. All right. So that's a horizontal shift. Now, if we also had a vertical shift on this function, well, we understand that shifts the graph up or down because you're adding or subtracting some value this. So if it was log base 2 of x minus 2 minus 3, we'd have to subtract 3 from all these y values, and that would move the graph 3 units down. Now, we really need to master that, okay? Okay, so uh, but, uh, you know, the forces, the directions of the forces, and we're just going to worry about the direction. Some of these forces will be bigger than others, but it kind of depends on how big these charges here are. Direction is always away from X charge. And so what, what we'll have, and I just realized I haven't recorded anything before this, so let me start over. Okay. 